Welcome to the next part of the Boomerang 2D tutorial series. This time we're going to talk about extending Boomerang 2D. We're going to talk about adding custom content and custom scripts to make Boomerang 2D function the way that you want it to function. Let's look in the Boomerang 2D framework folder and then under content. And there are four folders here where we can add custom content that will interact with our editors. We can add particle effects, sprite shaders, textures, and tile colliders. You'll remember in our tutorial video about the Actor Studio that we had a section on particle effects. You can only attach particle effects that are inside of this folder. So let's go ahead and create one. Go to Game Object, Effects, Particle System, and we'll just leave one here with the default properties. Now all you have to do is rename it and then simply drop it into this folder. If we refresh the Actor Studio after doing this, we'll notice that we still get this message saying no particle effects have been created. Before the Actor Studio can recognize that this exists, we need to go to Tools, Boomerang 2D, Build Reference Database. Once we do and we reload this, our tutorial particle effect will appear in this list, and we can simply add it. For sprite shaders, all we need to do is add a .shader file to this folder. For an example, I've copied one of the existing shaders and just renamed it Tutorial Shader, and then gave its name Tutorial slash Tutorial Shader. And I'm going to just simply drop it into this folder. Again, we have to rebuild our database in order for this to appear in our system. In our HUD object editor, we'll now see that the tutorial, tutorial shader, is listed right here in this drop-down list. Some sprite shaders will ask for a texture to interact with. You can put your own custom textures in here. They're simple black and white PNGs. And finally, we have tile colliders. To create a new tile collider, create an empty game object and name it anything that you want, and then attach a 2D collider component. All we do is drag it from our scene into our folder, and we rebuild the reference database. And now when we go into our Tileset Studio and choose Use as Collider, we'll now see our Tutorial Collider at the bottom of the list. One thing to note is that you won't see a preview of your custom Tile Collider inside the Tileset Studio. However, when you play the game, it will be there as you defined it. And that's it for content. Let's take a look at the Custom Scripts folder. If you followed along with all of the videos in this tutorial already, these folders will probably make common sense to you. The ones that come with Boomerang 2D can all be found inside the Framework folder. For example, Actor Events will appear under Actors, Actor Events, and under the Events folder. Note that each event has two classes associated with it, the event itself and then a Properties class. For our Actor Events, the first thing that we want to do is create a My Properties field and have a typecast to the Properties class for this event. And then you create a constructor that accepts those properties, typecasted, and assigns them. Finally, there's one method here called apply outcome. This method will be automatically called when the event fires within the Boomerang framework. It takes in two properties, target actor and source actor. And the difference between the two is when you're using this with interaction events. You remember that in the actor studio, when you use the actor filter conditions, you have the option to affect either this actor or the found actors. Whichever you choose will be assigned to the target actor. The source actor will always be the actor that the interaction event lives on. When we look at the properties, all we need to do is set a system serializable header to our class and then define our properties. These properties will appear under the events properties list inside the editor. Let's take a look at our next kind of custom script, the actor finder filter. We can find these under framework, actors, actor finder filters, and then under the filter subdirectory. Let's take a look at current state. We'll extend off actor finder filter and set up our properties the same way that we did with the actor events. Here the method that's called is called fetch matching actors. This method takes two properties, the origin actor and the actor catalog. The origin actor is the actor in which the interaction event lives on. And the catalog is a list of all actors in the scene. Here we're going to loop through every actor in the actor catalog and check a condition appropriate to this filter. For the current state filter, we're simply checking the current state of the actor and getting its name. Like actor events, these also have a properties class associated with them. The current state properties includes a list of state names, and we can see this list is defined here. The next type of custom script that we can add are the actor states. We can find examples of these under framework, actors, states. Let's open idle. We extend off actor state, typecast our properties, and create a constructor that accepts the actor, the state machine, and the state properties. Here we have an example of a function that can be called by a modification trigger. You'll remember when we looked at our actor studio, states can directly call these methods through the modification triggers section. Next we have a process state method, 
and this code is run on our actor every frame that our actor is inside the state. We also have another method called process post frame state, which is done on all actors at the end of the actor loop for every frame. If we look at another actor class state, we'll see that we have another method here called onEnterState, which is code that is processed as soon as the actor enters this state. And then finally we have an onExitState, which is called whenever an actor exits a state. Like the previous scripts that we looked at, each actor state also has a properties class. The next kind of custom script that we can add are actor triggers. We can find an example of this under actors, trigger system, and then triggers. Let's take a look at the current state trigger. We extend off actor trigger, and once again, we typecast a properties and assign that properties inside of a constructor. Actor triggers have one method called isTriggered. This method can have any kind of code that it wants in it as long as it returns a boolean. When the method returns true, the trigger is considered to have its conditions met. And once again, each of these triggers has its own property class. The next type of custom script that we can add are camera states. We can find an example of that under framework camera states. This works very similar to actor states with many of the same methods. And once again, each camera state class must be bundled with properties class for that state. The game event scripts work exactly like the actor events, and you can find examples of that under framework game events events. Your HUD object trigger scripts will work the same way as actor triggers. And you can find examples of that under Framework, UI Management, Trigger System, Triggers. The next custom script that we can add are Melee Strike Types. You can find examples of the Melee Strike Types under Framework, Actors, Weapons, Melee Strike Types, Melee Strikes. Again, we typecast our properties and assign them in a constructor. There are two important methods here. The first is called Get Collider Points, and the second is Animate. These will instruct the Weapon Studio and the game how to define the polygon colliders for the weapon strike. And finally, we have UI elements. UI elements are the most complex and are broken into three separate folders. We can find examples of that under Framework, UI Management, UI Elements. Each UI element must have an associated class in each of these folders. Let's take a look at the choice box. These are all of the properties associated for the choice box. Under Editor, we have Choice Box Editor. The Editor script allows us to configure how the element will look inside of the HUD object editor in both the preview window and in the form on the right. There are two methods here called Render Properties Form and Render Preview. The Render Properties Form will render the properties on the right side, and the Render Preview will show it on the display stage. And then finally, we have our behavior. This is the behavior of the UI element when it's displayed in game. We have an initialize method which is called as soon as the element renders to the screen for the first time in game. And then we use a normal update method like we do with other mono behaviors to control its behavior per frame. For each of these custom scripts, all you have to do is write the script and drop it into the appropriate folder. I've created a simple actor trigger that I call demo trigger. When we look at it, our is trigger just always returns true for this example. Under our properties, I've created a list, a string, a float, and a boolean. Now that I've dropped these in here, let's rebuild our reference database and open our actor studio. Let's add a trigger that transitions from duck into attack. I'll add a new condition. And when I choose this dropdown box, we'll see our new demo trigger is appeared at the bottom with an ext prefix. We'll also see that we have properties for demo list, demo string, demo flow, and demo boolean. And that's how you can extend the behavior and functionality of Boomerang 2D. Very useful if you would like a new state behavior for your actor, or for your camera, or if you need special conditions for your triggers. Additionally, if you have, say, another UI system that you'd prefer to use, you can write events that invoke that UI system instead of the one that comes with Boomerang 2D. Writing your own scripts can be a little complicated, but if you need help, you can join our Discord server and ask questions anytime. And with that, you've now completed all five tutorials that cover everything that you need to know about making your own games within the Boomerang 2D framework. I can't wait to see what you come up with.